Hello, my name is Michael Frank. I'm the Administrative Services Director and Assistant City Manager with the City of Santa Rosa. This is our third video blog regarding the budget and the budget issues facing the city. The first blog talked about budget basics. The second video blog talked about what our budget problem is and how we got there. And this video blog is going to talk about what our options are, what council's options and the community's options are for fixing the issues facing our city. As discussed earlier, a budget problem arises when your ongoing revenues are not enough to cover your ongoing expenses. So you can try and increase the revenue side or you can try and decrease the expenditure side. Of course, that sounds easier than it ends up becoming. So let's start on the revenue side. Unfortunately, or fortunately, depending on how you look at it, the voters of California have made it very difficult for governments to increase or make any type of changes to taxes. For taxes that go into the general fund, and that's what we're talking about, um, targeted for special services or specific services, for instance, park maintenance or for police or for fire, it requires two-thirds approval by the voters of the jurisdiction, in our case, by the voters of the city. Taxes that are general in nature, in other words, you ask the voters to pass a tax, but you don't tell them exactly what it's going to be used for, uh, only require a majority, but naturally those are much more difficult to get passed by the electorate. So we're relatively limited on the taxes, the new taxes side, although that might be an option to consider for the future is going to the voters and having discussions with the community about what levels of service they want in particular areas. Other than taxes, the only other significant re revenue option are fees. Fees for city services can only recover the cost of providing those services. So in other words, programs can't earn more than they're worth or more than they cost. So for instance, a revenue, a recreation class uh, at the senior center. We can't charge more than the cost of providing that class. Over the last five years, the city has made a significant effort in all areas to more fully recover the costs of programs. For instance, the city council set a policy that relates to all development fees. So all developers and the development function in the city, the policy states that those fees should recover 100% of the cost of providing those services. Other areas like senior or youth classes are not cost recovery. And given the ability of some of these citizens to pay, most likely won't be cost recovery in the future. Given what we've done over the last five years, there's not a whole lot of room to increase fees significantly. We are exploring a couple of fees in areas where we have not collected fees before. One of those areas, for instance, is there are a number of cities that have an emergency medical fee. And so that will come to the city council and city council may or may not decide that's something they want to pursue and there'll be discussions with the community about that type of fee. So that's the revenue side. Now let's talk about the expenditure side, and I'm going to talk about it in different areas. First, one thing we can do is look at efficiency to make sure that as an agency, as an organization, we're being as efficient as possible and providing uh, the most streamlined services as, as possible. So we are looking at that, and we continually look at that. Um, we are implementing technology in various areas to improve efficiencies. We are, there will be proposals coming forward, combining departments, reducing layers of management and reducing the number of managers. We're looking at areas of duplication or areas where 
We do similar functions in different parts of the organization and looking to see whether there are any uh, efficiencies by combining those areas. So that's efficiency. Another way of reducing expenditures is to look at our policy issues. One example of that is a policy issue we brought before the City Council about three years ago. The General Fund had a policy of taking a piece, 80% of a certain tax that came in, and sending 80% of that tax and designating it for affordable housing. So that was a policy of the City Council. About three years ago, when we were also having budget problems, we revisited that policy and Council reduced that policy from 80% to 20% of that tax going for affordable housing. So that's an example of an area we can look at with regard to, um, to policies. Reserve policy is another example of a policy that can be looked at. The big area, however, is with regard to salary and benefits. Salary and benefits, they make up about 80% of the general fund. So clearly, that's the area when we're talking about needing to reduce or having such a large budget problem, there is no way to address it without looking at our salary and benefits. One thing I think to realize in this area is it's not as simple as it might be if you have a small business where you can unilaterally reduce salaries or uh, reduce your workforce or contract certain services out. The city has a number of unions and bargaining units and we have various contracts and we operate in an environment where we have to honor those contracts by law. So we can't unilaterally take action if we have an existing contract. However, we are presently working with our bargaining units and our labor unions collaborative, collaboratively to see are there ways where we can reduce those costs. And we've made a lot of progress over the last five years. For instance, with regard to health insurance. It used to be that the city paid health insurance for all employees. Well, our miscellaneous employees at this point all pick up a share of their health expenses. Additionally, we're having discussions with our bargaining units about moving to a two-tier retirement system. So again, for our miscellaneous employees, agreeing that new employees that come into the organization would have a lower retirement plan than our existing employees. So we are looking at ways of reducing the city's benefit costs. In addition, we're having discussions with our, our unions and council about ways of reducing the future uh, increases that have already been negotiated in certain contracts. Where we don't have existing contracts, council has options to um, discuss and negotiate whatever increases or lack of increases or decreases that council feels is appropriate. 